Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Friday. On today's cryptocurrency markets, the market cap has decreased by almost 3.3% and it's currently standing at 2.19 trillion. Everything from Bitcoin to Ethereum to Solana all the way to Polkadot in the top 10 have decreased by between 1 and 5%. Terra, on the other hand, didn't suffer that much of a loss. It's doing relatively well compared to the rest of the markets. Otherwise, you can see that everything else is bleeding. And if you look here, the king of the market, Bitcoin, is moving laterally. It's going up and down. Uh, the bulls are pushing the prices up. The bears are pushing the prices down. It reaches the 46,000 support level. And it goes up and down and it plays with this line. Until one day it breaks down from it or it just shoots up. And we'll have to see going forward. So the reason behind the decrease in the cryptocurrency markets or the prices of cryptocurrencies is because the price of shares have decreased. So as we know, the crypto market religiously follows the traditional stock market. So if it increases, the crypto market follows. And if it decreases, the crypto market follows as well. Higher interest rates, surging cases and tensions between Beijing and Washington are weighing on global markets are causing some negative pressures on it. So similar to the Asian markets, the US share price has dropped after the Federal Reserve said it's preparing to begin to raise interest rates next year to fight the inflation. Also, Bank of England became the first central bank among leading economies to actually raise interest rates to fight inflation. Inflation has been a problem in developed countries, especially because money printing has and bond purchases have been used to stimulate the economy in a time of crisis. And the unfortunate circumstance is that this leads to inflation. And in order to combat that inflation, you have to begin tapering, which is decrease the purchase of bonds and increase interest rates. Also, the Bank of Japan said on Friday that it would reduce some of its pandemic support measures, including the reduction of purchasing of corporate bonds to pre-crisis levels after March. Because these major economies are making such statements, which will lead to less money in the markets, the markets have promptly reacted by selling off. And that's why the stock market has decreased and the crypto markets have decreased as well following that. Another aspect of the whole bearish sentiment in the market was the US's public condemnation of China relating to the apparent or human rights violations going on there. It was the latest measure intensifying US penalties over China's alleged abuses of ethnic and religious minorities in the Western region. The Commerce Department also levied new sanctions targeting China's Academy of Military and Medical Sciences and its 11 research institutes that focus on using biotechnology to support the Chinese military. These new sanctions obviously create tension between the US and China and this puts the whole global markets in a sense of wary and panic because when these two fight it's not it's generally not a good sign for the markets not not a good sign for the markets because there could be a future trade ban there could be a, a reduction in economic activity between the two countries which leads to a, a slower movement in the market and investors are just pr pricing it in finally rising numbers of the omicron variants are also casting a shadow as public health experts are beginning to urge greater precautions and warning of the worsening of a wave of the outbreaks. Since March 2020, we know that whenever there's an outbreak, whenever there's a fear of an outbreak, the markets react negatively because this implies greater restrictions, lower economic activity, and the stock market follows by selling off. On other news, Binance's US arm hires Intel's compliance chief, Majalia. So Sydney Majalia will be Binance US's compliance chief and he will report directly to Binance's CEO Brian Schroeder. He was a former federal antitrust attorney. He managed Oracle's and Uber's compliance offices and he will join Binance's US offices in January. He's been the vice president of legal and chief compliance officer for the chip manufacturer, which is Intel since August 2019. Given that they're bringing in such a compliance powerhouse, it shows that they're serious in their business and in their compliance front. And this could be pivotal as US lawmakers continue to apply pressure to the nation's crypto industry, which some have argued that is under-regulated. So Binance has come under scrutiny from a lot of economies, including the US, and they want to avoid friction with these countries because a lot of their customers come from these countries. So it's going to be very, very interesting how Binance collaborates with the government in terms of compliance and what services they'll be allowed to offer once everything is regulated. Guys, remember that regulation is not always bad. It can be good because it stabilizes the markets. On other Binance news, 
They're in talks with Dubai and Abu Dhabi on a headquarters plan. They're currently a virtual company without any fixed headquarters and they've come under scrutiny from for a lot of countries because they can't really be regulated if they don't if they can't pin them down to one one jurisdiction. So in order to become more compliant and in order for them to be in the good books of various governments, they want to set up one or more headquarters. In order to do this, especially in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, they have tapped former senior officials at the economic zones such as the Abu Dhabi Global Markets and the Dubai International Financial Centers. So Mark McGuinness from DIFC and Matt Gamble from ADGM. These will be pivotal people to lobby for them in order to establish a headquarters in the country or in one of the Emirates with favorable tax implications, with advantages. They want to now set up a global headquarters because they want to establish themselves as a mature regulated financial institution. They've never had a head office and they want to get to that now. Previously, they tried to set up a headquarters in Singapore where its founder Zhao has been living for the last two years. But there was a setback because they withdrew an application to run an exchange and it was clear then that Singapore was an unlikely option for its headquarters. Dubai and Abu Dhabi are seen as crypto friendly. They're seen as more welcoming to more crypto companies to be based there because they know that crypto is the future and if they host the biggest crypto companies in the world, that's where the money will flow. The Abu Dhabi global market is a free zone and they've made a compelling case with their quick rollout of virtual asset framework and recent incentives to lure financial technology firms, which is what Binance really wants. I think that Abu Dhabi could be their global headquarters, given friendliness to crypto, tax advantages, and probably long-term negotiations going on between the Abu Dhabi global market and Binance relating to other advantages that might be present in that free zone. A big hint that Dubai could also have a Binance office is that Zhao, it's co-founder has recently bought a house in Dubai and he has previously publicly praised Dubai for being pro-crypto. Not only did they want to register their companies in the UAE, but they also revived plans to register in the UK. It doesn't mean that they'll have a headquarters in the UK, maybe the, their European arm will be based in the UK. Federal regulators says credit unions can partner with crypto providers. So federally insured credit unions or FICUs can now partner with third-party digital asset service providers, uh, the National Credit Union Administration said. And this includes facilitating member relationships with third parties that allow FICU members to buy, sell and hold various uninsured digital assets, which are cryptocurrencies, with the third-party provider outside of the FICU. This is big news. FICUs hold billions if not trillions of dollars and these funds will now be unlocked to flow into the crypto markets and increase that market cap. It can cause a bull run, another bull run if this gets approved. It's been accepted but not fully approved yet and when this starts rolling out then we'll see the real impact of this through a lot of money flowing in to cryptocurrencies through this. Why they did this is because in a nutshell they're smart. Credit unions have been watching endless outflows of cash to crypto exchanges and many people would rather use their primary financial institution for their first foray into crypto investing. Instead of letting people invest in crypto in unregulated ways, they rather, they rather regulate it and know where the money is flowing. They rather control it. Credit unions, they look like they're the first institutions to sort of jump onto the boats and let's see what happens going forward. I think a lot more institutions, a lot more government institutions in the US are gonna follow suit and allow their members to start investing in crypto. Kazakhstan is piloting a CBDC on R3's Corda platform. R3 Corda is a permissionless, basically a P2P, peer-to-peer -peer distributed ledger technology platform. And it allows businesses, or in this case, banks with governments to manage secure transactions directly between parties. The National Bank of Kazakhstan wants to establish a digital tench. They want to pilot it by June 2022 and launch it by December 2022. They chose Corda because they say that they have the capacity to maintain anonymity, confidentiality and traceability of these transactions. What this means, they want to control these transactions. They want to know what money is flowing where. Just like the Chinese digital yuan, the ba National Bank of Kazakhstan wants to know exactly where the funds are flowing. Why Corda was chosen be is because of their ability to do so. And because of this, other countries such as Sweden, Japan, Canada, Switzerland, and South Africa, including France as well, have also started successful CBDC projects based on Corda as well. 
So it seems like Corda is the go-to platform in order to establish CBD plat uh, projects on. And this two-tier CBDC model that NBK is exploring, they're going to supervise the whole system and smaller banks open digital Tenge wallets for users to exchange, redeem, and restore digital Tenge and make interbank transfers. It's a method of control. They supervise the whole system, they know what's flowing where, they use smaller banks as sort of gateways to the public. While they maintain control of the whole system, they know where each digital tenge is flowing, who paid wh what to who, and it's important because more than one in five people in Kazakhstan, so 20%, do not have access to banking, and this trend is particularly pronounced in rural areas, where a large number of individuals continue to use cash for retail transactions. So because of the low cost of digital tenge and its similarity to cash, this could have a significant impact and significant adoption in Kazakhstan's rural areas especially. On more Wall Street news, a financial advisor, LionTree, explores crypto payments. They're quite a popular financial advisor, not too big, and they also offer investment banking solutions. They're looking at cryptocurrencies as a payment method. They talk about crypto as a potential tool for empowering individuals and explore some of the biggest trends in crypto, such as DeFi and NFTs. Not only will they accept crypto's payments, but it looks like they're also going to offer DeFi services and NFT services too. If Wall Street is starting to adopt this, then it's only a matter of time. As I said before, it's only a matter of time until there's mass adoption. They applaud crypto's achievements and milestone in 2021, but they also highlighted some of the flaws and hurdles that it needs to overcome before it becomes mainstream or widely adopted. They said that the technology needs to become more energy efficient, which it is becoming as time goes on, and the focus should be on building more user-friendly interfaces, which is true to a certain extent, because if you look at all of exchanges, excluding the major ones, they're quite complicated to use, and one small mistake means that you lose all your tokens. You might think that Lion Tree adopting crypto payments isn't a big deal. They might be small, but remember that they played a key role in the merger of Warner Media with Discovery Inc. They also played a part in Amazon's acquisition of MGM Studios, and they also helped Snapchat or Snap Inc. with its IPO. HSBC and IBM create successful multi-ledger CBDC demo. The two firms successfully executed cross-realm and end-to-end -end digital asset transactions with the pilot test, which can also settle securities in Forex. They announced a successful test of an advanced token and digital wallet settlement between two central bank digital currencies. I'll say it again. Transactions between two CBDCs in a cloud environment, and it consisted of transactions between CBDCs, e-bonds, and Forex. So not only between uh, CBDCs, between individuals or banks and individuals or the government and banks to the individuals but between different countries different central banks it's making cbdc's interoperable as forex is interoperable and interoperability across different distributed ledgers and technologies was key in demonstrating how to save time reduce market risk and improve security for transactions between central banks commercial banks and clients around the world if they can pull this off governments will be using cbdc's to trade with each other it's going to reduce costs, it's going to speed up everything, and the global markets are, are going to become even more efficient than they are now. It's quite exciting because before we used to talk about CBDCs on a national scale, now we're seeing advanced type of tokens and digital wallet settlements which allow for the trading of CBDCs between countries. So if you have a digital dollar and a digital uh, euro, you can, in you can trade them using this um, digital wallet settlement and it takes one second you don't have to go through a bank you don't have to wait two to three days before approval it's instant it's digital and once again they're using R3's Corda as the basis of the distributor ledger facilitating the transaction R3 Corda very very important it's gonna be probably gonna be in a lot of news articles and we'll see it being adopted with probably most CBDCs in the world. As they get more CBDCs in their portfolio, the better they will get and the more refined it will get. It will be able to offer better services, more advanced services such as this. I believe that Russia has set 2022 as a deadline to decide between a ban on crypto or legalizing exchanges. Personally, I think that they're not going to ban crypto. They're going to regulate it heavily, but they're not going to ban it just because the figures suggest that Russians transact about $5 billion each year in cryptocurrencies. It's insane amount of money. They can't really ban that. It's going to cause a lot of money to flow out of their economy and 
maybe maybe even cause a recession. They say that there exists a very tough approach about the complete prohibition of cryptos, such as acquisition or ownership. There also exists an approach where there must be appropriate crypto exchanges where everything is legalized, transparent, and understandable to regulatory bodies. It would be easier for the Federal Tax Service of Russia to set tax such transactions. The latter would make more sense. I believe that they're going to regulate it more. Um, it's going to become like a stock market and they're going to be able to tax it more. They really can ban it. The chairman of the Central Bank of Russia, Aksakov, also voiced his support for crypto mining regulation in the country, citing factors such as mining taxation and business electricity consumption. They're saying that they might ban crypto, but listening to Aksakov, it seems that he doesn't want to ban it. He wants to regulate it. He wants to regulate crypto markets and he wants to regulate mining. They want to regulate it because they want to tax it more. They want to avoid tax evasion. And that marks the end of the video for today. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and I'll see you for the next one. Invest wisely. Cheers.